Hey everyone. So when it comes to pen and ink, drawing and sketching things that are solid black in value can be a little tricky and a little intimidating for many of us. But with a few simple tips and just loosening up a bit, you will realize that sketching values that are solid black or any object or form that's really solid black is not so bad after all. So in this video, I'm going to share a few simple tips that I think are quite useful when it comes to shading things that are just solid black in value. And you'll see that these are things that you can apply to drawing almost any subject. It doesn't necessarily relate to the examples that I'll be sharing with you. Before I get into it, of course, I just want to take a few moments just to thank you guys for supporting my book, A Pen and Ink Drawing, A Simple Guide. It really means a lot, the amount of support that I've got. And uh, again, you know, for those who have taken the time to really uh, whether where regardless of where you bought it, whether it was an eBay or Amazon, you know, wherever, thanks so much for taking the time to leave your comments, leave reviews or feedback, whatever words that you actually shared with the world about how you felt about the book. I really appreciate it and thanks so much. So before we begin, even though it's pen and ink drawing, it's important to point out that it's useful to have something that allows you to fill in broad areas of space pretty easily. So, you know, something like this, like a brush pen is pretty useful. Or you can use a uh, something that allows you to have a broad point and a small point. So something like this, actually I can use the this for the small point and use this for the broad areas. So I can fill in areas pretty quickly and then I can use this for smaller marks and details. And actually I can use this for both actually by pressing down on it or using the side and then using the point but even though you know the distinction is not that sharp but I can still use it like the microns have a marker this is a size one so I can use that for to filling in broad areas and then I can just use this one to this is a size uh, 05 I can use this to do the smaller marks it's useful to have the you know the uh, versatility and you'll see why in a second Secura also has their own brush pen as well so you can fill in broad areas and also make smaller lines i like using the uh, prismacolor it's a nice balance for some reason over the years i've tried a lot of them but i kind of end up always uh going back to this one of course the pentel is beautiful also it's really perhaps the most brush like of all of them really soft but this can be a little bit challenging to use for most people because it's really soft. It doesn't have the hardness that just traditionally um, uh, you're used to with when you're using a technical drawing pen. But it really gives you the brush-like effect if you're able to <laughs> not press down the point that much. Now, the first thing to consider when drawing things that are solid black and value is structure. And by this, I mean we look for visual indications of like uh, major plane changes, edges and, and cross contours and so on. Any kind of visual inv inv information that helps you to accentuate the structure, how this thing is three-dimensionally put together. A simple example is like, um, like, like drawing a box like this. Now, when you look at this, all you're seeing is just a flat shape. See, there's nothing that actually separates the planes, the major planes, or gives us some information about how this thing is uh, structurally put together. But if we just simply do something like this see by having those edges left white what now i'm indicating how this thing is put together structurally now let's say we're gonna draw like a um a mask see just looking at it like this doesn't really give you that much information right but if we were to um go in and start actually you know giving some information to you that actually accentuates the different planes and so on like for example see the nose how you shade it can be pretty flat but if you start doing say for example we know the plane of the nose is like this right so now i'm going to shade it i'm going to make sure i leave areas or lines that actually kind of communicate that to the viewer
what I'm kind of like helping you to see is like you're seeing the plane contour. So you, you're getting the feeling that this is turning like this. See, if I didn't do that, then this would just be a flat shape pretty much like this. And even this, this little white strip of light is giving you a sense of like, okay, maybe there's this edge is catching light and there's some change in plane like this. And this edge is here. See? So that's what that helps to communicate. Now, another useful thing to look for and think about is overlap. Where forms overlap, kind of like it helps us to distinguish adjacent spaces. Um, it gives us clarity, of course, and it also can, helps to convey a sense of space. So where something is just solid black, if there are no overlaps, then we won't be able to distinguish what from what. So by actually leaving white spaces where overlaps occur, it helps us to, just, to make the meaning of things, first of all, and also to start distinguishing how things relate to other things, or well, our parts of forms or different forms relate to each other spatially. A good example um, is like in clothing, you know, like say for example, we had actually something simple like this. Let's just say like this is a skirt. All right, there's something simple like that. So this form, we have three forms here. This overlaps this and this overlaps this. So just by indicating just slightly something like this. So, of course, you can easily see how this would relate to, you know, when uh, if you're drawing like a scarf or any kind of clothing where you have wrinkles and stuff like that. Those areas show you where forms bunch up and show you where forms overlap each other. And you can use those as ways of distinguishing. See, for example, I'm distinguishing both legs here by having this this white area here where the folds are and the creases are simple things like that. So even like with here, I'm able to distinguish forms from each other and it actually you can look at this and actually make sense of it now the third thing i'll share with you is importance of thinking about light now this means you look for like um like reflections uh gradations or shifts in value that conveys that helps to conveys the the curvature or volume or structure of the form because of, after all you know all of these things that i'm sharing with you overlap and help to enhance each other so you know distinguishing major planes and looking for the structure that also is uh can be as a result of an effect of light so you know it's good also though to think about these things individually so with light you're looking for specifically light effects or effects of light so for example like say you have um uh you're drawing like a, a like hair hair is a very common example of that like that i say it's a ponytail right so of course you know if there's a light source say here wherever the light is um it, it doesn't really matter because the effect of light will tell you where the light is coming from so say for example the light is here most likely the part of the form that's facing the light source most will have the reflection so i know that most likely these areas will be pretty dark and then what i'm going to do is leaving areas light That will help to distinguish where the light is. And even with drawing different, you know, texture here, it's the same thing applies. This is where I'll discuss perhaps like a, a bonus tip. And it's also the importance of being gestural, you know, having fun with abstract shapes. And what I mean by that is when it comes, that's something I think is really unique to pen and ink drawing is that it's almost like impressionistic. You know, when you're drawing with pen and ink, you have to be okay with 
connotation and not denotation. With pen and ink, you don't define everything, you see? But sometimes you just suggest and the suggestion takes care of the rest. So in other words, you don't literally have to understand or explain every mark that you make, but understand that it is part of a grander scheme that will create meaning. I, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. You know, with pen and ink, you have to be okay with marks that don't make sense. Be okay with scribbles. You know, be okay with just putting random lines and knowing that it will account for something. And people will see meaning in it. See? So, just like this, you see your face, right? And I'm just, if you look at each mark individually, it will look like what the heck am, is this guy drawing but when you look at it collectively it makes sense and that's something that's sometimes not as easy to grasp um for beginners with pen with drawing with pen and ink is that sometimes you have to be okay with having marks look like scribbles so you see shading things with a black and value doesn't have to necessarily be as daunting as we think but of course you know it, it does help to know or be aware of a few key concepts and techniques to use and i'm sure some of you have your own methods anyway and feel free to share them in the comments below so nonetheless you know i hope you found something useful in this video informative or inspiring in some way and uh if you did please give the video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please do so you can see more videos like this and you can also you know not miss the new uploads that will be coming and again thanks so much for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next video